us agree with one. And your position is? Judge, I would maintain my objection that the defendant is trying to offer those statements that he doesn't remember substantively. And I think that the proposed section where it's, it's to add would be reflect uh, regarding statements of a defendant. So I would suggest that the defendant cannot introduce those statements. I would ask that the instruction not be given because it reflects on the substantive nature of the I don't remember. Counsel, that is a consideration, is it not? Are you saying that these statements were offered by the defense substantively as opposed to their bearing on the state of mind of the defendant? Your Honor, what I'm saying is that uh, I believe that the charge as written... No, 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 just answer my question. I know what I, I know how the charge is written. I ask you a specific question. Do I believe that those yes, statements that, were offered that the for the truth of the matter? That these statements were offered substantively. I do. And how, how do you get around the hearsay rule for admitting those statements? Your Honor, the hearsay statements can come in um, uh, in certain circumstances, and I believe that there's there's an exception applicable to these, which is. Uh, state of mind. I'm looking now, Judge. I'm, I'm not sure what subsection specifically counsel's relying on for state of mind. What's the subsection counsel you're relying on? I, I don't have a specific subsection, Your Honor, because I don't have the rule in front of me. so the jury can conclude that he did in fact not remember anything. Your Honor, because the instruction includes specific statements from the officers, I, I, well, that's I felt that the state, the state introduced those. They're not hearsay. We don't have an issue with that. They're introduced substantively. That much is clear. They're admissible that way. And you're asking that these statements be included as statements of the defendant in a part of the charge that deals with substantive statements of the defendant. So you're offering them for their substance, for the fact that he didn't remember. And as you know, a defendant, if he doesn't testify, the defense can't introduce his statements substantively because he's not subject to cross-examination. So there's got to be an exception to the hearsay rule. present sense impression. I'm not sure it fits under that exclusion or that exception to the hearsay rule. not to split hairs, but I would argue it doesn't apply the present sense impression because it says without opportunity to deliberate or fabricate. And there's at least contradictory or uh, 
inconsistent testimony here about whether the defendant was was faking that or not. So that's an issue in the case, Judge. From the from the perspective of the prosecutor, that doesn't mean there's evidence sufficient to deem it decided now. Well, it has to be decided by the court to grant and admit the statement under the legal exception. Your Honor, I would argue that, that, that the decision on that issue is within the province of the jury. Well, the problem with that section is that it really addresses something that happens contemporaneously. As a person is witnessing the event. You know, so a, perfect, uh, a person that would say, you know, oh my God, he has a gun at the time of the shooting would be a present sense impression. It's what they're observing at the time. I'd agree with that example, Your Honor. But if I may, he's being asked what happened in his present sense impression upon being asked that question is, I don't know. He's not perceiving the incident at the time. He's recollecting the incident. That's the difference. Statements that happen when the crime is being committed, if it's, if it's a car accident, and someone shouts out as they're witnessing, oh my God, they ran a red light. And it's heard. That's a present sense impression as it's occurring. Not 10 minutes after when a police officer says what happened, oh, this car ran a red light. That's not a present sense impression. That's after the fact. And I think Mr. Barrison's statements were not made at the time of the shooting or even immediately after. It was after he was handcuffed. After the scene was secured by police officers, after the medical people arrived. So I don't think it falls under 803 C1 as a present sense impression. Nor do I consider it an excited utterance. The only possibility as I see it would be under 803 C3, Mr. Shelhorn. Judge, I, I read that as well, but that also says it does not include a statement of memory or belief to prove the fact remembered or believed. And I realize this is the negative. Right, but, the opposite of that. Right. But I think that the analogy there is the defendant can't just put in a statement that says, well, I don't remember what happened to prove that I don't remember what happened. some notes and comments after the rule. I'll read those in detail during the lunch break <clears throat> and then make a decision. Thank you, Your Honor. And I marked this uh, defense. And what were the statements again, Mr. Uh, it was the ones I found, Your Honor, uh, come on uh, day six. Right. It's Don, Dan Vitale? Dan Vitale. Kimberly and what was What was his reported statement? Uh, that he, he, that Michael Barrison says, and this is according to my notes, Someone was there to take my kids. I can't remember anything else. And I felt that my notes recorded both Vitaly and Held testifying to the to that effect. And when your run is ready, I'm Dr. Haney. Dr. Haney was, do you remember? Answer no. That's what my notes record. I'll review it after lunch. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.